China is expanding testing for its digital currency known as Digital Currency Electronic Payment, or DECP, to include the Beijing Tianjin Hebei region, the Yangtze River Delta, the Great Bay Area, and the pilot area in central and western regions where conditions permit. The first release for trying operations in April, how has the digital yuan fare so far? What is the second round of testing intended to prove? Will the DCEP help the internationalization of the RMB? And if so, could it become an alternative to the U.S. dollar? To talk about these issues, I'm joined by Mr. Liu Zhiqin, senior fellow at the Chongyang Institute for Financial Studies at Renmin University, Michael Son, co-director of FISSF FinTech Research Center at Fudan University, Anthony Chen, former Chase uh, chief economist at J.P. Morgan, and Steve Keane, honorary professor at the University College in London and distinguished research fellow at the Institute for Strategy, Resilience and Security. That is our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Zhu Yu. So let me start with you, Mr. Liu. Um, China began the trial run of this digital currency, what we call DCEP, earlier this year. Uh, what is the scope and trial of the trial, and what does it aim to prove? Uh, I think we have to say the scope and the scale of this uh, experiment is not so large as uh, we hope, because this is only in the very initial stage of the utilization of the DCEP in China, beginning from the, this year in real practice. That's why there's all this uh, uh, DCEP could be at the moment in the uh, special areas for cities and for areas that uh, in small business uh, uh, places like a restaurant or like some uh, small seller retailer so uh, the skill scope is so very very uh, uh, limited and also the s scope of the uh, usage is only for the payment itself so it cannot be used for any other uh, trans transfer or other um, m money uh, transportation in the uh, real sense. But at the moment, it, all things are in the initial stage. And for different purposes, but the main purpose is that uh, China try to begin this experiment to gather more experiences in dealing, in handling, and in solving all the problems that could uh, emerge from the DCEP. So also we can show something that uh, to the whole world outside of China. Of course, we have some economic purposes that uh, we can talk uh, later on. And Michael, uh, actually the trial be only began in April 2020, still in the midst of a uh, pandemic. And now in August, they want to expand the use. What do you make of the pace? Well, I think it's uh, accelerated. I think post-COVID and also with some of the geopolitical tensions, uh, now there's a, a much expanded scope. It's to all the essentially the prosperous and wealthiest areas in, in the country. Uh, I, I've heard over 28 uh, locations and covering the Yangtze River and uh, Guangdong province. Uh, and also it's, it's moving beyond just, I, I would say, the retail. It used to be uh, focused on just uh, payments uh, in, in areas, for, for example, McDonald's and Starbucks, and it's been expanded to uh, major e-commerce platforms like Meituan and Didi and Bilibili, which is a streaming platform. So I see a lot of activity to uh, expand the, the scope. Notably for the, uh, the last three uh, companies I mentioned, they have uh, a, a very large user base, uh, a over a billion people and also have uh, users that expand into international territory. So we see a, uh, a strategy here to actually expand the scope of that. Also, um, we are also seeing um, commercial to commercial activity. So the banks are doing more industrial scale uh, uh, transactions, uh, I think in preparation to stress test this for general use uh, in, in the general economy. And Anthony, uh, actually the Chinese digital currency has been in the making for quite some time. Uh, what is your thinking on the timing of its launch and its strategic uh, goal here? Well, I think it's uh, not 
opportune time to do this because this is a situation where uh, we have a global pandemic uh, and we want to make things uh, a lot more efficient, get people excited. Remember, there are many central banks around the world that have ambitions to have a digital currency, yeah. but China, BOC, is one of the early uh, adopters of this uh, of this technology. So I think it's very exciting. It's still early days, and so we cannot expect this uh, to be completely functional in the early days, but compared to other central banks around the world, uh, China appears to be leaps and bounds ahead of all other central banks, and many central banks will learn from the, from the Chinese experience. So I think it's very exciting, and, and we should limit our expectations as to how quickly it can go, but certainly it's been a a project that's been in the making for at least six years, and I think that in the next five years, uh, we're all going to be amazed as to how much uh, uh, takes place and, and how much uh, is accomplished. And, and Mr. Neil, how quickly is it going for Chinese? Can average uh, consumers uh, using this currency to buy anything in, in their payment? And what has been the response? I mean that in the near future that all these Chinese users and the customers can get used to use this uh, DCEP, but DCEP at the moment is not largely uh, promoted or recommended to the uh, public use. But for some person that who are really interested to do it, they can al already do it. As we know that we have already WeChat payment, we have uh, Alipay and a different uh, similar as this uh, DCEP. But uh, if we have uh, the app in our uh, mobile phone, so the two mobile phones can be put together just to touch with each other, I think the transaction is already finished. So that's why we see that um, the normal people, the normal uh, uh, customers can get used to do it because the people here in China are very curiously, uh, very uh, fresh oriented. They also want to learn something new, so especially for the uh, electronic payment in the digital currencies. So this form will be very attractive for many uh, young people and also for some aging people. They already have great, uh, show their great interest in doing so. So I hope that uh, this market will be uh, slowly exploded and also enlarged in the near future. Can show really a good example to the outside of the world, you see. So is this also the reason why they have chosen uh, the economically developed areas like the Greater Bay Area, Beijing, Tianjin, and the Yangtze River Delta? But it also said uh, some western and central regions where conditions permit. What kind of conditions does it imply? I mean, this, uh, the, uh, the preconditions I think are very important in two uh, areas. One is the technical or technology infrastructure is really uh, well managed and uh, well established because all this uh, digital uh, currency uh, transfer should be uh, needed in security and also in transparent uh, in a very tough uh, system management. So the infrastructure in the technological field must be first uh, built up. And the second also, the people that the uh, professional people in the banking or in the uh, other uh, areas that uh, especially in charge of the e-commerce business, they should be well educated, well trained to deal, to handle such uh, transactions. Because this is also very new, not only for the normal uh, users, but also for those that uh, who are really regarded themselves as uh, professionals or experts in this field. But uh, for such DCEP is something new. As we know that in China we have already started six years before to learn, to manage it, to build up the team, build up the philosophy and also some law system. But actually in practice we need a lot of uh, work and efforts to be done. And Michael, uh, we know there are some cryptocurrencies in use, such as uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and even Facebook's plan uh, Libra. What is the difference between the Chinese uh, national digital currency 
DCEP was those versions? Well, I think Bitcoin, uh, which was uh, basically invented about 10 years ago, uh, was really a groundbreaking uh, technology. Basically, they created, uh, the, a guy named Satoshi Nakamoto uh, uh, created this new blockchain concept which allows the decentralization consensus mechanism so that you don't need a centralized authority in order to do the uh, ledger transactions to, to, uh, to maintain a system. So they created this digital uh, value system called uh, Bitcoin and it's completely decentralized. We call it a public or permissionless blockchain. Anybody can um, participate in this network uh, without any sort of permission and, uh, and, and transact in it. So th it, by definition, this is outside of a centralized system. So mm -hmm. uh, governments or banks or centralized authorities uh, do, not, do not have the ability to uh, manipulate the system. But that's the not a currency that in nature a, because we can't pay with those bitcoins to buy things or make transactions, can we? Uh, yes, you can. A uh, definition of a currency, there are three uh, major attributes. One is a store of value, one is a medium of exchange, one is the unit of account. Uh, Bitcoin arguably satisfies a few of these. The medium of exchange, because of the volatility, is something that's uh, not so sure. So people define Bitcoin uh, as primarily a store of value, so digital gold, right? And uh, to answer your question, um, Libra, on the other hand, is what, uh, which is what Facebook is using as a uh, digital currency, in, is involved with a permission blockchain. So we have people who actually maintain the system. They're specially chosen uh, to be able to participate in that. And the original uh, instantiation was a basket of currencies. Um, recently, Libra 2 was uh, announced and this removed the uh, basket concept and in our individual uh, asset-backed currencies. Um, and then the DCP uh, is a totally different beast. It does, it's, not centralized, it's not decentralized at all. Actually, it's a two-tier system. It's a completely centralized system in the first tier to allow the People's Bank of China to uh, transmit value to uh, uh, other intermediary banks and there's a secondary system to transmit the, uh, the, the DCP payments to the general public. And that secondary layer could uh, potentially be blockchain or decentralized as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony, what do you make of the urges of different institutions? There are central banks trying to do this, uh, Facebook at a commercial company, and, and like uh, Bitcoin, that's, that's um, basically a group of people who are based based their idea on blockchain, they all want to do it electronically. Why there is a such strong desire to move that way? Well, I think it, the, the primary reason behind all that is to make it convenient, make it secure, and make it efficient. Uh, I think the big difference uh, between the DC uh, EP and, uh, and these other currencies that you've mentioned, like Bitcoin and others, uh, is that you don't have the same anonymous uh, participation that you do with these other currencies. When you make a transaction, uh, the, the central bank of China will have complete transparency and complete information on that transaction, which obviously has some benefits. Uh, you can certainly protect yourself against uh, fraud. You can protect uh, the country against money laundering. Many benefits. Uh, but at the same time, it also allows the user to feel comfortable and secure that their transaction has full transparency. And if someone uh, tries to commit fraud, then the government can actually step in. Remember, it's a two-layer uh, approach. You have the central bank and you have the commercial banks. And you potentially are using blockchain technology, but it doesn't have the anonymous features of many of the other cryptocurrencies uh, that are actually promoted on that basis, this currency does not. And on top of that, uh, it has a stable value. Unlike Bitcoin, which can uh, fluctuate in value, uh, this currency will basically parallel, uh, be in parallel to the actual uh, stable RMB uh, currency, and the, and the value will not fluctuate over time. So you also feel secure uh, with the value of the, of the currency, which you cannot feel with many of the other cryptocurrencies. And earlier you said many countries have been considering to have their own 
a national e-currency, uh, and the Bank of America recently expressed fears that the digital yuan could challenge the U.S. dollar as the currency of choice. Uh, do you share a similar concern? Uh, what will a digital currency do to renminbi? I think that it's early days uh, to be concerned about that threat because remember, for a currency uh, to basically be the supreme currency or the reserve currency of the world, uh, you have to have no zero. You have to have zero capital controls. You have to have the currency basically being uh, have its value set in foreign exchange markets freely. And so far, although that may be the goal. Uh, of the Chinese government for the uh, for the RMB, uh, the renminbi, that is not the case. Uh, we you still see some capital controls. Uh, you still see uh, the inability to move the uh, Chinese currency uh, freely into other countries, and so those conditions have to be met. Not to say they won't be met at some point in the future, but I think it's early days uh, before we can start mm -hmm. to. Uh, entertain uh, the risk or even the possibility uh, that the Chinese currency is going to completely overtake. Is it going to make uh, using the renminbi a lot easier and perhaps increase its popularity? Absolutely. Uh, but that is something that we, we, we really have to talk about uh, perhaps uh, uh, later on when these other conditions mm. are relaxed. And when they do, then, then at that point, I think... Uh, uh, the RMB poses a, a bigger threat to the U.S. dollar. And the reason I ask this question is because of the big backdrop, of course, the deterioration between U.S. and China economically and financially. And some people say this might be a good way of circumventing the possible U.S. banking sanctions on China. Could IC, uh, DCEP provide another uh, channel for people to access uh, Chinese currency and b better use of it? Uh, when the U.S. is uh, sanctioning China financially? I have no doubt that that is uh, exactly the case, but that's a different question than saying whether the, the RMB will become the international uh, reserve currency of the world. And that, so I think initially for those countries that want to participate in China uh, and can go and, and use this DCEP uh, infrastructure, it will make life uh, a lot easier for those uh, countries, but it still does not uh, uh, create the conditions uh, for the uh, uh, Chinese currency to, to pose a real threat to the reserve currency uh, of, of choice, which is the U.S. dollar. I think that that will come later on, uh. and I think that that's the power of China to make those conditions uh, occur sooner rather than later. It's up to China, not up to the the rest of the world at this at this stage. All right, thank you, Anthony. And Mr. Liu, uh, a bigger question is probably uh, if DCEP become uh, more popular and even a dollar alternative, uh, what it will do to help China's economy. I think this question is quite essential and very interesting to all people in China that who are considering to utilize the DCEP. Because DCEP is an alternative of the payment, it's not an alternative of the banknote of the traditional Chinese currency. The both currencies are in legal position, have the same reputation in the market. So this is very important. That's why that we see the great importance to support, to stimulate, to promote China's economy in a further and the more free way for development. Because DCEP can make the business transactions more easier, more confidential, and uh, more effective. That could help that all the business group, businessmen, and all companies to do more effective business transactions, including domestic market and also international market. As we know, China is becoming already the largest uh, trading uh, country in the world, so we need a lot of uh, means and the measures that uh, to safeguard our the transportation and also our money uh, transfer. So DCEP is one of the best choice for China to follow these measures and also to safeguard the security of our economy. So in this way, that it will help the China's economy 
in a very safe way. I should say DCEP is another electronic engine for China's economy's further development. We can see a lot of very positive results in the time to come. Uh, we have Steve Kin on the line, uh, honorary professor from UCL. And Steve, uh, what is your take on uh, China's digital currency on, on its economy? I think it's an extremely good idea. I've been in favour of digital currencies, central bank digital currencies, for quite some time. The basic reason being that uh, we have a mixed fiat and credit system in our economy. Uh, the government have, creates fiat money, the private banks create credit money, and all, every large major crisis in capitalism's history has been caused by the credit side rather than the fiat side. Uh, that breaks down transactions and transactions are the lifeblood of any economy. Mm. So a, a central bank digital currency makes it possible to maintain transactions even if there is a crisis in the credit system. So I applaud China for bringing this initiative forward. And it can do a lot of job that, uh, to help the government and our system that to avoid any possible money slaughtering and the corruption. So this is another way that, uh, to safeguard and uh, promote China's economy. That means that uh, China is facing great challenges for risk management and risk control in the future, according to the turbulence uh, uh, situation in the world. So that's why I think uh, DCEP is very good, positive for China's economy now. And Michael, I know you are a finance expert, uh, but there are some practical questions that I want you to tackle. Well, we have already uh, electronic payment systems like WeChat Pay, Alipay existing in China, actually quite prevalent uh, in China. Uh, what does DCP offer that those things cannot? Well, in China is a very unique situation. As you mentioned, there's a duopoly. Alipay and WeChat take over 95% of the market in terms of electronic payments. Uh, this is not necessarily a good thing, actually. I think in, within the country there is, is, there is debate about whether or not there's too much power in the hands of these tech companies, right? DCP sort of levels out the playing field, or at least provides an alternative to give uh, banks, for example, the ability to actually transact and the technologies to provide their customers with an alternative. Uh, that's one, right? Second, uh, we have to remind ourselves that um, technically, even though Alibaba seems like a very uh, stable company, uh, you know, in, in there is the possibility that it could default uh, because it's not really asset backed the same way, let's say, a sovereign uh, currency is. So right. the PBOC can guarantee the, the fiat. Yeah. And, and as you yeah. said, and you also, I think uh, yeah, beyond ahead. that, mm -hmm. go ahead. Beyond that, I think we also have to consider that uh, there, you know, we're, we're just talking about payment right now, but the potential for the DCP and the technology is as programmable money. So instead of just having a payment functionality, which is a traditional thing, you can imagine programming functionality into uh, money that is very useful. So for example, in the current uh, economic crisis, there's been lots of bailout money. And a lot of that bailout money is actually just given to the banks and given to, in, in China's case, the state-owned enterprise. That money may not be efficiently used to stimulate the economy because uh, the, the money is used for uh, things like stock buybacks in the states, mm -hmm. right? For example, in the United States, the airline industry uh, you know, is asking for $50 billion in, in bailout. And that happens to be roughly the amount that they spent in stock, stock buybacks uh, for, uh, from since the original uh, crisis from uh, 2008. Right. So with a programmable money, you can imagine uh, putting any sort of uh, uh, functionality in it. You can limit the yeah. use and you can also directly transmit that money to the people who need it the most. So for example, the SMEs and the financially excluded, the most fragile uh, people in the economy with the offline businesses, real stimulus. Uh, now we have a mechanism for the, uh, for the People's Bank of China to directly uh, stimulate the economy at that fine granularity um, and with, with a, a, a more refined fiscal policy. You also mentioned that uh, digital currency makes sense in, in time of crises or natural disasters. But what about the security and privacy of those users? Uh, can I lose money more easily with a digital wallet? And, and will my information be lost uh, e more easily because of the use? 
That certainly is the case with private wallets. There's many, many stories of people being scammed with a private wallet or using a particular exchange which then gets broken into and they lose their money. This is a central bank digital currency. Using similar blockchain style technology for security of the transactions, but there's only one ledger. It's maintained by the central bank and the account is held at the central bank. So it doesn't have the, the dangers of being broken into in the same sense uh, or fraud wiped out as a private exchange does. And as the previous speaker mentioned, the money can be repurposed. You could use this for universal basic income. You could use it for carbon credits, which is one system I'd like to see implemented to uh, bring climate change under control. So it's a, it's a great form of flexibility for the central bank and it is much, much more secure for the public than private blockchain technologies. And another thing is that people worry uh, digital currency probably is easier to be overused, causing inflation, because uh, uh, the decision makers might be tempted to print more money digitally. Well, look how successful they've been at causing inflation for the last 20 years. Uh -huh. it's, it's amusing. This is a case <laughs> of going back and fighting the last war. Inflation was crushed in the West in about 1980 to 82. It's been falling ever since and deflation is the real problem the global economy faces right now. So I'd rather look at the promises for this of reversing deflation and a major system. Again, it could be used for my idea of a modern debt jubilee as a way of cancelling private debt, which mm. is a major factor behind the low levels of inflation today. And we have also collected uh, some ideas from social media users on China's uh, new digital currency. Let's take a look at uh, what some of them have been saying. Uh, BTC Shark official said the principal in DCP Research Institute said considering that the uh, currency is limited to pilots, it won't be used in large quantities and fully promoted in short term. The currency circulation rate will also maintain normal levels, therefore it will not cause inflation. Uh, that is on the presumption that it won't be used uh, widely in the short time, fr time frame. But uh, what is the time frame for the use of this currency, Mr. Liu, when it will be used all over com the country? I think it will take some years that, uh, to uh, follow up because we need two uh, phrases that, uh, to finish all these preparations. One is that uh, how to get the people that are used to use this money, this EEP, because this is not easy to make really 100% in the public. We need a lot of time and efforts to do it. And secondly, we should know that all the for the whole country, especially in the western areas, we, as we already discussed, we need this uh, technological infrastructure build up and uh, secondly we need a professional mm. uh, team that, uh, for all these uh, uh, operations. And uh, third, at the moment I should say that uh, the market is the most important thing. When the market conditions are already mature, that uh, in good time, in the right time, so we can do it all over the country. But uh, we, I prefer to have the similar as now it is that uh, we prefer to do it uh, step by step, one area to another area, from the one advanced province to another province. We cannot uh, overweb all these uh, areas and the regions in, in the country to do the DCEP. Okay. That will have chaos. All right. Uh, on that note, we have to wrap up the program. Thank you, Mr. Liu. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, Michael. You've been watching Dialogue here on CTTN. I'm Zhou in Beijing. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.